we're going to talk about retrans and how it has changed cable and over the air. When I was a kid, the first cable bill in our house was $10. Then went to $30, but you got a lot of channels for that $30. You got HBO and you got CNN and the Animal Planet and all these new emerging uh, cable channels. What you didn't get on a lot of these cable systems was the local channels. The cable systems and the satellite systems especially didn't carry local channels right away. Some started to, but then something changed and that was the must carry law. The must carry law said if you're a cable system, if you're a satellite system, no matter how big, no matter how small, you have to carry all the full power TV stations in your market. So all of a sudden you're paying for cable and you're able to watch your localism again without an antenna. And that's what started to destroy the over the air aspect of television. Less and less people put up antennas because they now could just pay for cable and get it. Then came retrans. And what retrans was is the big four networks, uh, local affiliates started to realize, hey, we have all the power here because most of the people who are watching cable are watching our channels and we're getting the highest ratings. So we can force the cable channels to now pay us. They have to carry us, but now we're gonna force them to pay us. And that's called retrains. So they would negotiate with the cable companies and the cable companies would give them 50 cents per subscriber, 60 cents per subscriber. And now it's some, channels get two dollars per subscriber per month so cable grew over the air got addicted to uh retrans and it changed the face of everything what started to drive the cable bills through the roof from $30, $40, $50 a month to $100 a month, to $150 a month to $200 a month was consolidation. Consolidation on the cable side, consolidation on the OTA side. On the cable side, companies like Disney would say, you want to carry ESPN that has, has high range? Well, you have to carry ESPN 2. You have to carry ESPN 3. You have to carry ESPN the Ocho so people can watch their dodgeball. People who get that reference, you're my hero. Then on the OTA side, you had less and less companies owning more and more of the OTA stations, the big four networks. And so before when you had a small independent cable uh, uh, network group, sorry, uh, negotiating with a local ABC affiliate, that was one thing. Now you have a huge cable system that covers dozens and dozen markets, negotiating with uh, one company that owns ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox uh, stations in multiple of their markets. And they're saying, either you pay us this much per subscriber per month, or we're going to pull this off of your systems. And you see that all the time, where all of a sudden your local channel, certain local channels go dark on your cable system or on your satellite system because they're having an argument over retrans. And this has driven the prices to cable way, way too high. Because you are now, when you when you pay for cable, you're paying for every channel, whether you're watching it or not. Even these small channels that you, you never even stop on, to even look at, you don't even know you have, you're paying two cents here, five cents here, 15 cents there, and that adds up to a $150 uh, payment, a $200 payment per month. And you're paying for the local channels they do carry, whether you watch them or not. That's right, if you don't speak any Spanish, if you're in a market with Univision and Telemundo, you are paying for Univision and Telemundo even though you're not watching them. It's just not good business for consumers and that's why you started to see the, the cord cutting take off. People said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of paying for all these channels I never watch. And it's true, out of a thousand channels, most people are watching broadcast channels. That's where most of the ratings are. 
As a matter of fact, I may be putting up right now uh, just to show you the most watched uh, programs in 2021. But one thing you're going to notice, they're almost all available on broadcast channels that you can get free with, a, with an antenna. But you're paying for all these channels you never watch. So it just doesn't make good business sense. And that's why cable on the TV side, the entertainment side is dying. The thing that's keeping cable alive is the fact that they have the last mile into your home and they're providing internet for the new wave of television. But here's the kicker. And I've discussed this before. For you that have cable and you're paying for local channels, you're not even getting all your local channels. When I was uh, in the TV side of business and I started the first ever Spanish language station in Southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Naples, I thought Comcast, of course they're gonna wanna carry the first ever local Spanish channel. I'm not even gonna charge them for it. I'm, I'll give it to them for free. They said no, because we were not must carry. They said no, because in Florida, the person who's the head uh, of Comcast, if you're not must carry, they're going to squeeze you and force you to pay, even though it's in the public interest for them to carry you. And so in Southwest Florida for years, they did not, they were not able to get the local Spanish station, the first ever local Spanish station. We weren't even asking uh, for their viewers, for their subscribers to pay for us. We're just saying carry us. So in these major cities, you're paying for localism and you don't get even a small fraction, especially if you're in cities like LA and Houston and Dallas and New York and Tampa, Miami, Minneapolis, St. Louis, all those, all those markets, you are only getting a fraction of what's available locally because it's not must carry. So on the one hand, cable systems started charging you uh, tons of money for things you weren't watching. On the other hand, uh, broadcasters got addicted to the retrans money, which forced them to neglect uh, being innovative with the over-the-air uh, signals, the broadcast signals, bringing it into the future. Now, cord cutting accelerated that and made the broadcasters realize we need to start doing things with our spectrum that people are going to want. And that's where ATSC 3.0 comes in. Now, next week, we're going to look into the future. I'm going to put my hat on and look 10 years into the future and give you a glimpse of OTA and OTT and where we're going to be and how you can prepare for that future. And then next year, we'll talk about just things that are happening in the OTA world, in the OTT world, and, and, and how it affects each other. We're going to talk about niche programming and look, even look deeper into certain markets where OTA is vibrant, where in certain markets, there's 30 percent uh, cord cutting. And we're going to see, uh, you know, how that is going to continue to grow and the innovations that are going to be attached to it. So I look forward to continuing this conversation with you.